It's YouTube Wednesday! I am headed to a thrift store to get all the makings for an elf costume. And uh, I'll try to show you as much of what I'm looking for and how I go about looking for it while I get this elf costume together. First one. This is Christmas stuff that they have laid out. And while it's good, it's just too on the nose for uh, the elves that I'm doing. You can't get what you want unless you know what you want. So I actually have a Pinterest board that I made for elf costumes to give me ideas. So now I have to find things that meet my ideas and I'm not necessarily looking at random. I'm looking for textures and colors and patterns that I want. Being an elf, I want to find some reds and greens and earth tones and stripes. It doesn't matter that they're not red and green striped, they're striped. And just that pattern can be a theme. These would be amazing if I was making an elf costume for ants because they're so small, but they catch light. Um, you know what? Maybe I can do something with sleeves on them. No. How much are they? Very simple pair of red pants. These could be a great base. Um, they look comfortable. That's a big deal. They look like they would fit an elf-sized person. Good on pants. Please. This is great. Fur vest. Adds texture. And also makes them look like they're from a cold place. I'm looking for a good base shirt that just has a nice color or stripes or something that makes it a little bit remarkable. But I can layer other stuff on top of it. Long sleeve. So that the makeup artist has to do less work. Uh, take a second and do this. And look at what's in your cart. What are you pondering about getting? Hundred percent. These are the pants. Pants are done. I also think, though, that I'm going to want like leg warmers to go from the shins down, and I think that's going to be these. That fabric would be good leg warmers. Yeah. What am I missing? I'm missing green. So now I know I want that undershirt to be green. I gotta find a green undershirt. Now all I have to do is scan and look for green. I have plans for this, and I have plans for this as a part of the outer layer. But I also want a capelet for this. Maybe a hood. These, lovely. But they got to go. I picked up this earlier. It has long sleeves, which would fill in the holes on this one. But um, now I think I want something red underneath of this. This is red, basic, long sleeve, good undertone. It happens to be an XL. Good underneath for what I'm looking for. Okay, so all I'm really looking for now is a hood, and I found this which is lovely. Uh, it has the brown that I want, and it has white. Now the white, I can change, and I can make that red or pink or something. So I think I'm gonna get this and just plan on using it um, in a couple different ways. I'll also make uh, things for the arms out of this right here. So this is it, that's my elf. This is a second part of my design process where now that I have stuff, I'm going to design again based off of what I have. Uh, and right now, I don't even care if it's a shirt or if it's a pair of pants. I don't really even care what it is. I just want to look at everything. I know I got a belt to be a belt. That's cool. I have a pair of pants here. I know that those will end up being pants. Ooh, there's stuff in the pocket. Money? Could it be money? 
Oh, it's a tissue and some CFS can CVS candies. Gross. I didn't win the lotto on that one. Ooh, ooh, another dirty napkin. <laughs> Great. Pair of pants. I have another. Uh, this is a green shirt. And here's something that we have to think about sometimes. What does this look like inside out? Has this been inside out the whole time? It hasn't. But look at that material on the inside. I, I'm, I might call that winning. I think that we're gonna use this inside out because then I have two fabrics. I've created additional layering and texturing. So we'll do that. Wonderful. Uh, and then we have this, which I really only got for the hood, but uh, other, who knows what could happen. And then I have a red shirt here, and I have this pair of wonderful stripy pants. None of the colors that I want are in these pants. Let's redesign based off of what I have now. Okay, so that helped me visualize a little closer of where I want to go with this. And now I feel confident that I can modify some of these to be better colors for me and for what I'm doing. So let me get on that. And I don't need all of this, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this where I want it. I do like this. I like this as kind of an over vest. Do I want to keep this as an over vest? Yes, I do. So I'm just going to cut the sleeves off. This is so nice. Uh, I need to, to use it. I like the pattern on it. I like all that. A little test on the back. What is this brown easier to turn into? Does it turn green easier? Or does it turn red easier? I think that the brown is going to turn green easier and these will go red. The more I mess this up now, the less I have to distress it later, so don't be afraid. Oh no, I got this thing dirty that I'm going to distress anyway, how terrible. Christmas, sucker! Can you see that transformation? Isn't that amazing? Man, I love spray paint. Admit it. You never thought about spray painting sweaters. this. Uh, now that I did this and I changed my mind, these are going to be my like bracers and hand warmers and these are going to be my leg warmers. I made myself a sweet pair of booty shorts. Yeah. Bow, chicka, bow, bow. Now these are going against the red pants that he's going to be wearing. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit these with green. I'm going to let all that dry before I start distressing the other stuff. I have flipped inside out the ones I painted green and I thought uh, just in case these slouch and move too much and they give them a little stiffness so that they don't move too much, I'm gonna spray paint the inside with a, a mist of red, about the same amount as I did the green. 
Uh, and that should add some interest visually when parts of it are flipped over as well as stiffen it up. Now I'll set these off to the side to dry. So this shirt is not as red as I'd like. And uh, all I want this for is the hood. I'm going to do kind of a hood and mantle, which I intended to do with the sweater, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. This will give me some ragged to this costume. Now I have a simple hood and mantle that I just cut out of the first store shirt. Let's hit it with a little more red to make it a little more red. A lot of this won't show. I'm just going to distress the parts that are going to show. And if I need to distress more later, I always can. I'm using glossy wood tone from Design Master as it has a nice translucency. And I have bunched up the fabric so it's not getting it even all over the fabric. That's as distressed as it needs to be. I like that duality, I like that silkiness. So yeah, I'm leaving that. But we do have to get some color on this. I'm not being even, I'm modeling this surface. I'm just breaking it up so it's not all one similar shade of green. To ensure that this is thoroughly infestivated, I have a really nice ribbon with a Christmassy feel that I'm going to put along the bottom of that. Uh, let's just call it a tunic, tabard, overdrape. I'm going to hot glue this on. Should I sew it on? Yes. But I don't want to sew that thin, stretchy fabric to this hard, not stretchy ribbon. That won't be fun at all. I'm just going to hot glue it. It'll be fine. So you'll be able to wash it, you just won't be able to dry it. Uh, I could also, I could also add that trim to the bottom of this, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I want this to be a little tattery, and that's going to add a nice edge. I want thumb holes in these so that the actor will be able to put their thumb through uh, and kind of have it be one of one of these numbers. If you're doing this. Remember, there's a right and a left. I'm going to turn this inside out and do a little bit of hot glue around there as a fray check. The inside of this sweater did not change color at all. I'm going to hit this with some black just to kind of make it go away. This is the base layer.
I, I actually like that. Stay. Okay, so this is our thrift store elf costume. Um, this is it. I rarely ever do shoes for actors because there's so many different sizes and stuff. You can like relax a little now and yeah, you don't have to hold that pose. That's just one of my elf masks. And you can see that we have a lot of layers. We have some tatters happening. Um, I'm pretty happy with that as far as an elf goes. And this is very much a one day elf build. Would you uh, give us a spin so you can kind of, yeah, that sweater was so awesomely terrible. Yeah. And yeah, almost like cheating. And obviously we saved the sleeves to be little hand scrunchers um, just to change things up and add a lot of visual interest. That's what you want. A lot of pieces, a lot of layers. And this is it just without that even. That's kind of fine. Show me your back. And I cut holes for the ears through the mask, which is something that I would recommend. There we go. That is a $30 or so elf costume from the thrift store. Go make stuff!